Good morning, New Savannah Baptist Church. Um, before we start, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for all that you've done and all that you will do, and thank you that we are yours. And Lord, I pray that you would protect us, and Lord, I pray that you would speak your words through me this morning, and I pray that you would change the hearts of these people here. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, this morning we're going to be talking about peace. The Lord's peace. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. What we are seeing around us is fear this world of fear and as believers we should not fear the world system is trying to stamp out the church by fear but these are the words that were given from apostle paul to timothy a leader of the church in a great time of persecution where believers could be killed because of their gatherings Someone may even be a wolf in sheep's clothing. And they knew that they could be killed. But the peace of the Lord was upon the early church in those days. And they did not fear at all. Because with the Lord Jesus, we should have no fear. And God holds us in the very palm of His hand. And our days are numbered. As well, that is yet another reason why we should not fear. And Job 14.5 says this, Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. And also in Psalm 90.12 it says this, So teach us to number our days, so that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So, we should number our days. That meaning that we should understand that we have a lifetime, an appointed time that we are to live in, appointed by God. And we should not fear because we have Jesus on our side. And during this time in the life of Timothy, the world system tried to stamp out the church, trying to disperse them from their assembly but the church would not allow that the world system tried to incite fear in these people these early christians saw other christians being burned on the post tortured and killed but they had the peace of christ they knew with him that everything would be okay even though everything around them may have not seemed okay and that god has already numbered their days and it was would be predetermined when he would take them home into the fullness of his presence into an eternity with him forever. And we should rest in the peace of Christ just as the early church did. And we should have no fear. These people did talk about fears and persecutions. But they knew that Christ was with them. Although harm may have came to them philippians 4 verse 6 through 7 says this be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god and the peace of god which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through christ jesus I must give you a warning. The warning is this. The sword may come to your house and you and your family may be killed one day for the sake of Christ. But as believers, the book of Revelation calls us chosen and faithful. Let us stand firm to the end. 
I'll try to set an example, a good example, for being fearless for the cause of Christ. Let us preach the gospel with all boldness. I encourage you to do the same. And we must live peaceably with all men during this time. But let us remember, we must carry the message of the gospel forward. To live as Christ and to die as game, brothers and sisters. Let us be a faithful and faith-filled church and not this faithless church. As I said before, I think it cut out. Um, we should be a faithful and faith-filled church and not a faithless church. And we should live in confidence, not in fear. Because 1 John 4, verse 18 through 19 says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And we have the love of Christ in us as believers. And we should be filled with faith and by the Holy Spirit. We should do as what God calls us to do. Before I close, I promised that I would share the cure to the this virus. For the nation, the cure is to turn back to God. This nation has went away from God and has served other gods and has committed idolatry. So this happened. And we as believers must carry the good news of the gospel and of the one true God to this lost and dying world. In the book of James, chapter 5, let me flip there. James chapter 5, starting in verse, what is chapter 14? It says this. It says, Is there anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. The prayer of faith will cure this virus. If you feel that you're coming down with something, pray over yourself. And also, pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ called intercessory prayer intercessory prayer is very powerful and we need a good prayer life we need to be on our knees especially during this time of crisis because that is our communication to God we should be constantly on our knees praying because our power comes from Him. We can't do anything of ourselves. Jesus said in the Scriptures, without me you can do nothing. And we should believe that. The prayer of faith can cure this virus. So we should pray for ourselves as well as others and we should pray over ourselves. It says low connection, so I'm not sure if it's going or not, but I will post this as well. But also, remember this, that the Lord is with you. You should have no fear and we should exercise faith and we should have a prayer of faith especially in these days. 
And we should be constantly praying for others and praying over ourselves. If we feel that we're coming down with something or if we just want to prevent this. And we need to share this gospel that we have. The truth of God with all boldness to this lost and dying world. Because Jesus is all that we have. I have a challenge for each and every one of you. The challenge is this. I want you to pray an hour each night for yourselves and others with this pandemic. I want to you to pray for wisdom and also I want you to find a journal and each day I want you to set a timer for five minutes and write down all the Bible verses that you know from memory. Because we need to rely on God's truth and we need to know God's word, especially in this difficult time. Because the scripture is the word of Almighty God. And we must rely on God and his strength. Because the Bible says that he is our strength. And his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And at this time we are weak. But let us remember this. That our God is strong. And our God will keep us. And hold us. And we have nothing to fear. Yes we should act with common sense. But we should have the prayer of faith. We should be the faithful church and not the faithless church because the prayer of faith by believers is the cure to this virus and pandemic. And for this nation, the cure to this virus and pandemic is to turn back to God. And as believers, we have the peace of Christ in us and we are called chosen and faithful. Let us rest in the Lord's peace this week. Let us rest in the promise of Jesus and let us rest in God's word in prayer because we have God on our side. If any of you need anything, I'll post my number on this page and I will be willing to pray for any of you if you have a need of prayer and I'll be praying for this body, New Savannah Baptist Church. This church is faithful and is filled with the love of Jesus. I am thankful and grateful for this church. God bless you all. And I will be praying for each and every single one of you. Before I close, let me go to the Lord in prayer, and I'll pray for you all. Dear Lord, thank you for your peace, and thank you that you have us. And Lord, thank you that we are your children. And Lord, thank you that we have nothing to fear at all. Lord, thank you that we are yours. And Lord, we should have your peace because... You have us in the palm of your hand. And you've put the Holy Spirit in us. Lord, you are our peace. And you hold us. And we are your children. And I thank you for that. Lord, thank you for all that you have done. And all that you will do in our lives. Lord, Help us, guide us, and protect us, especially through this time of crisis. And I pray that we would find some way to assemble soon. In your name. Lord, I pray that these people would remain bold in the faith that we have. And that they would proclaim boldly your gospel and your kingdom to this lost, dying, and sin-sick world. Thank you for the promise that we have in you. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Y'all have a great week. Um, remember the challenge. I'll post it right away.
Acabou assim.